Uh, hello, so today I'm going through problems of this weekly contest 171. We'll start with the, uh, I'm, go I'm going to do now um, the second problem, which is minimum flips um, to make um, A or B equal to C. And so the problem says we get uh, three positive integers or numbers A, B, and C, and we want to return the minimum number of flips in some of the bits of A and of B um, so that we can get a or B, so or here is binary or, um, we can get C. Um, and then the flip operation basically here is considered um, changing 1 to 0 or changing a 0 to 1 in either binary representation of A or B. And so you can see here A binary representation here when A is equal to 2, it's 0, 0, 1, 0. For B equal to 6, it's 0, 1, 1, 0, right? And so when we change it here, you could see, so here they are not equal to C, 0 or 0 is 0, right? So we need to change here one of them, so we change 1 to 0, so that we can get, sorry, so we change one, 0 here to 1, so we can get 1 or 0 to get 1. And for these two, which are ones, we want to change them to, um, we want to, because one or one is one, so we want to change them to zeros to get zero. So we change both to zeros. And zero or one, that's already one, so we leave it as it is, zero or zero, that's zero. So in order to get C, we need to change both zero, the first zero in A to one, and the second um, zero to, for A in, to, um, a sec, uh, the, the one in A to zero. And then this one here, we need to change it to zero. And when we do that, we get the result. So we have to change the three bits um, to get um, to get C, and so that's why we return C. We return three here. And um, the rest of the example have a similar thing. Uh, A is this, these are the ranges we are dealing with. So here you could see that, like a double loop for A and B, where we try each combination and each changing of bit won't work. And so let's see how um, okay, so let's see how we can solve this problem. So um, here what we what we had was that the, um, so let's just take an example here. So the first example that the, that the problem gives is we have um, A, right, which is equal to um, 2, and then we have um, B, which is equal to um, six and then we have c which is equal to five right and so if we take the binary representation of each then we get for uh, a it's zero zero one zero for b it's zero uh, one one zero and then for c the binary representation is zero one zero one and our goal basically is to make these um all of these equal which is not the case right now right so what would we need to do? So you could see here, just from doing it manually, what I'm doing, okay, it's zero, zero, right? And I need one, so I have to change something. So I have to change um, this one, zero here, to be one, or or change the other one to be zero, whichever one, uh, we can do both. And here I have one, one giving me one, but actually I need zero, okay? So I can change this to zero, but the problem, that's not enough. I still get one with the or, so I need to change this one to zero, too. And so, and pretty much once I do that, I've got C, right? So you can notice some observations from what I did here manually, right? So um, the observations that we can make from this is, first what we did is go column by column, right? By column. And by column, I mean here the, the, um, the bits that are here, right? Column by column, which means basically it's by the from left to right in the binary representation, right? So from uh, right to left. In the binary representation, right? And so by that I mean that um, what we need here is, so by that we can deduce that what we need here is getting the bit in the current column, right? In the current column, so that's what we need. Um, and of course, getting the bit and f is just basically f finding if it's set or not, right? If it's zero or one, it can be either zero or one. So finding the bit means just figuring out if it's set or not, and we can do that by doing and one, right? So if you take some value x and you say and one, that will give you either um, one or zero depending on whether it's set or not, right? So we know how to get that, right? 
And then now we need to know how can we go to the next column, right? So how to go to the next column. That's a, a, the other part of navigating from column to column, right? So here, how to get to the, to go to the next column. Um, so that's also is very simple, right? With binary, in order to get, to just move off of the, the first bit here, to do that, you could just say X like this equal to basically by shifting to the uh, shifting right and so when you shift like this you you will re you will remove kind of this zero one and then when you do end one again you will get the the second one here right which is what we want and we do that again to get this third one and we keep doing that until the value is zero right and so here so, so iterating means we need to find out how we advance and we need to find out when we are done and here our case here done means the value is equal to zero um, so done here means x is equal to zero right except here there is the other caveat here is that um, that we need to remember to deal with is that we need to navigate for for basically a, B, and C, right? Because that's what, if you had an addition of numbers, 3, 4, let's say plus 5, 6, 1, 0, for example, you would need to navigate here and do 4, you need to navigate here, and you need to wait until you are done with all of them, right? So when you reach 0. If you had, let's say, numbers and you want to check if they are equal, you would do the same thing, right? You would wait until you finalize every, all the numbers, you, you uh, traverse all, all of them, right? And so we know here how to traverse and we know how to check the bits. Now, how can we know the minimum number of flips that we need to do? So one thing you notice that I did here is that for the case where it was, so for the case, where, so counting the minimum flips, how do we do that? While traversing this way. So we know how to get the, the bits that are set. Now, how do we count the minimum flips? So you can notice here in, when I was doing this, when I did one, one, so there was this one, let me just repeat it maybe here so that it's clear. So A was, so A was this 0, 0, 1, 0, and B was, or is 0, 1, 1, 0, and C is 0, 1, 0, 1, right? And as we said, we are traversing from here to the, from the right to the left, right? So when I was doing it, I said, the value here is 1, right? So the value here is 1. So to get 0, 0 to be 1, I need to change one of them to be 1, right? So when 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 both are zeros here, so let's just enumerate all the cases. So when both bits are zeros, so that means change one of them to, or flip one of them to get 1. So here, and C is equal to 1, that means flip one of them. get to get one right and then here we see when both were one um, I just replaced it this was zero but that wasn't enough because I'm still getting one and so I need zero so we could deduce from this is that when both are um, zero and the one at position C is equal to zero sorry when both are one then we need to flip both right so the count here is equal to 2. We need to increase the count by 2. And here we need to increase the count by 1. But this is not general enough. So we need to generalize this um, intuition here a little bit more so that we can find the solution, right? So one, thing, way, one way to generalize it is, okay, let's just give these some notation here. So let's say at, position, at current position while we are traversing, right? Let's call x is equal to um, the bit at position i at position for a so that that's what we get with x and a and one right so this is what we will get with a and one and then for uh, for and then we will say y is the bit at uh, at the position for for b right and let's call z the bit for c at the current position and we will get this one with b and one we'll get this one with c and one right and so we have two cases, right? So either we have x in binary, right? Since x is a binary here, x or y is equal to z. In that case, 
do nothing, right? Because that's what we want. We want all the bits to align here with C. Or now they are different. In that case, we have multiple cases. So in that case, well, we have a case where we need to change everything, which is the case when both are equal to 1, because we need to do two flips at that point. So here, if x is equal to 1 and um, and y is equal to 1, that means we need to do two flips. So that means here we will need to do count plus 2. Now if that's not the case, so if, um, let's say, if both are not equal to y, so we have a couple of cases, right? Either x is equal to 0 and y equal to 0, or um, x is equal to 0 and y equal to 1, or we have x equal to 1 and y equal to 0, right? And so in all of these cases, what, what we know that x, um, x or y is different than z, right? So since for the case where both are zeros and z is x or or um, x or y is different than z that means that z must be equal to 1 because otherwise they will be equal so in this case that means that we need to just flip one of them to get 1 right we just flip x so we get 1 or 0 which gives us 1 or we flip y and we get 0 or y or 1 which gives us 1 right so that means we need one flip, right? So uh, let's call this. So it needs one flip. One flip. And so this would mean we can do count plus one. Right? The other case is that, the other case is this case, where x equal to 0 and y equal to 1. So since is x or y is different than z, that means z must be 0, because otherwise this would have been equal. So z must be 0. So if z, z must be 0, then that means that... So let's just write this in the same color. So this is count plus 1. So here, um, z must be 0, so that would mean, in this case, that... Um, we need one flip, right? We can just flip y to 0 to get both to be 0 and to get z to be 0. So we need one flip here too. Which means here we can do just count plus 1. For x equal to 1 and y equal to 0, again, same reasoning. x or y is different than z, right? Which means z 1 and 0 is 1. So z must be 0 again. So the same reasoning. And that means we can just, again, just flip x to 0 and we need we get what we want. So we need one flip, which means count plus 1. So this way we can generalize this now, right? Because we know that the only case where we need to do f two flips is this one. When they are different, when x or y is different than z, the only case where we need two flip is when x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. All the other cases we need count plus 1. So now we know what to do. So let's just um, write the code for this. So we have definition of we min flip. That's what we are doing here. And we have A, B, and C, right? So we want to count how many how many flips we need. So let's just, just declare the variable for that. And and we wanna we want to um, we want to keep going until, as I said here in the section for the iteration, we need to go column by column until we can't go no more, right? And so that we are, we will wait for all of them to be equal to zero. That would mean that we are done. So we, we will keep going while A is different than zero, or B is different than zero, or C is different than zero. So until we exhaust all the bits for all of them, we will keep continuing. And so now let's extract x and y and z, right? Which is the bit, uh, the bits at the current column for each of a, b, and c. So for x, that would be the value at position a. So that's we can get it with a and one. That's what I said here to get to extract the bit at the lower position or the last position. We do that for y. We do b and one. 
for C, we do C and 1. Sorry, for Z, this is Z. Okay, so now we can do the conditions that we um, described here, which is either X or Y is equal to Z, or it's different, right? So if X or Y is different than Z, that's where we'll do something. The other case, we don't need to do anything, so we just skip it. So here we have two cases, as we said. We have either both is equ are equal to 1, then we add 2 to the number of flips. In all other cases, we add 1, right? And so we say if x is equal to 1, right, and um, y is equal to 1, then in that case, we have to add 2 flips, right? In the other case, we need to add just one flip. And then that's pretty much all there is to this portion. And then we need to move to the next column, right? So that we can continue iterating. And to move to the next column, as we said, it's by shifting. And so we just shift each one of them, A, B, and C, so that each one of them moves to the next column here. So we process it this column, so we need to move to the next column here, right? And so to do that, we just say shift A, and then shift B, and then shift C. And then at the end, when we are done, we can just return um, the count. And that's pretty much all there is to, uh, to the solution. Okay, so now let's um, uh, write this in lead code and make sure it passes the test cases. Um, okay, so I just typed the, um, the solution that we just went over, um, uh, that we just saw in the overview. And so same while loop here, and here we are getting the bit at the current column for each one of them. If they are different, we have either two cases, both are equal to one, then we have to change to flip both bits, so we add two. Or we, otherwise, in all of the other cases, we can just flip one of them. And then we move on to the next column, and at the end we return count. So let's run this and submit it. So here, if you could see, we traverse at most the length of the of the longest one of them. So number of bits. For, so it's really just the number of bits that we can have for these numbers. So it's not. Uh, it won't take a lot of time. Okay, so that passes. Um, yeah, so that's it for this problem. Um, thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye.